Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about central venous pressure monitoring. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. What do we mean by venous pressure? The average blood pressure within the venous compartment. Now, what is central venous pressure? Central venous pressure is also referred as filling pressure. It is the pressure of blood returning to or filling the right atrium. The circulating blood flows into the right atrium via inferior and superior vena cava. Pressure in the vena cava is equal to right atrial pressure. In simple words, the pressure in the right atrium is known as central venous pressure. CVP is measured through a central venous catheter in place. Now, what is central venous catheter or central line? A central venous catheter, also known as a central line, is a long, soft, thin, hollow tube that is placed into a large vein. And the catheter tip sits just outside the right atrium in the superior vena cover. Central line has multiple lumen, namely proximal, distal and medial as shown in this picture now what are the indications for inserting a central venous catheter volume resuscitation in order to rapidly deliver large amounts of fluid or blood for example when a person is in shock central venous catheter is indicated next is emergent venous access for sample withdrawal or for medication administration. Next is nutritional support. In order to deliver nutrition directly into the blood when food or liquids cannot be given through the mouth, stomach or intestine. For example, total parenteral nutrition administration. Next is inotropes. Critically ill patients need support of inotropes, which cannot be given through peripheral line. And hence, in such cases, central venous catheter is indicated. The next indication is hemodialysis. To connect a person with kidney failure to a hemodialysis machine that clears the body of waste and extra fluid. And the other indication is central venous pressure monitoring. Now, what are the veins used for central venous catheterization? Common sites for inserting central venous catheter are internal jugular vein right and left, subclavian vein right and left, and femoral vein. Why do we measure central venous pressure? The purpose of monitoring central venous pressure include to serve as a guide of fluid balance in critically ill patients, to estimate the circulating blood volume, to determine the function of the right side of the heart, to assist in monitoring circulatory failure. The central venous pressure is most valuable when it is monitored over time and correlated with patient's clinical status. What is the normal range of central venous pressure? The normal range for central venous pressure is 5 to 10 cm water or 2 to 6 mm Hg when taken from the mid axillary line at the fourth intercostal space. Now, what happens when the central venous pressure goes beyond the normal range? A CVP greater than 6 mm Hg indicates elevated right ventricular preload. There are many problems that cause an elevated central venous pressure, such as cardiac tamponade, constrictive pericarditis, pulmonary hypertension, stroke volume is high, and most common is hypervolemia and right-sided heart failure. But remember, this should be correlated with the clinical features. For example, Patient may have tachycardia, hepatomegaly, ascites, and edema, etc. In such cases, 
the goal includes identifying and treating the underlying cause in order to reduce the elevated central venous pressure and the treatment includes diuretics and administration of inotropes to reduce the elevated central venous pressure now what happens when the central venous pressure falls below the normal level central venous pressure less than 2 mm hg indicates reduced right ventricular preload which is most often from hypovolemia dehydration vomiting diarrhea excessive blood loss over diuresis can result in hypovolemia and a low cvp and as discussed before this should be correlated with the clinical features where patient may have tachycardia hypotension oliguria or anuria here the main goal includes identifying and treating the underlying cause and the treatment includes fluid resuscitation until cvp returns within the normal range next factors affecting central venous pressure cardiac function blood volume capacitance of vessel intrathoracic and intraperitoneal pressure remember a cvp measurement should be viewed in conjunction with other observations such as pulse blood pressure and respiratory rate and the patient's response to the treatment methods to measure central venous pressure it includes indirect measurement and direct measurement Indirect measurement includes inspection of jugular venous pulsations in the neck and direct assessment is by using manometer or using transducer and next we will be discussing monitoring central venous pressure by using transducer central venous pressure transducer setup so these are the articles needed 500 ml ns transducer kit transducer holder and transducer pressure cable how do we set up the equipment maintain aseptic technique open the transducer set and tighten all the connections hang the 500 ml saline in the pressure bag and spike it inflate the pressure bag to 300 mm hg and turn stop cock to upwards position clamp iv tubing Place the transducer holder on IV pole. Place transducer in transducer holder. Attach the IV tubing and the PM line in the transducer kit. Unclamp the tubing and remove air from the tubing by activating the flush device. Point stop cock at the transducer horizontal and clamp the tubings. So this is the setup. as shown in the picture shown in the picture a transducer holder is fixed on the iv stand and transducer is fixed on the transducer holder the upper part connects to the central line port with the help of pm line and the lower part connects to the pressurized saline bag and the stop cock is off to the atmosphere now how to level the stop cock level stop cock on the transducer to the phlebostatic axis of the patient phlebostatic axis is the intersection of fourth intercostal space and mid axillary line place the patient flat in a supine position if possible alternatively measurements can be taken with the patient in a semi recumbent position The position should remain the same for each measurement taken to ensure an accurate comparable result. The next step is to identify the proximal lumen of the central venous catheter and scrub the port with the alcohol swab. Connect the PM line to the proximal lumen of the central venous catheter. Now attach the transducer cable to the monitor. Turn the stop cock at the transducer upwards off to the patient as shown in picture 2. Remove the cap at the transducer. Now tubing is open to air. Hit 0 on the monitor. Replace the cap. 
turned stopcock a transducer horizontal off to the atmospheric air as shown in the picture 3. Now check the waveform. Now in this image the line in blue color indicates the central venous pressure. Remember when central venous pressure is high it indicates hypervolemia and when central venous pressure is low it indicates hypovolemia and hence CVP is a guide indicating fluid balance and this should always be correlated with the clinical features. So this is all about central venous pressure monitoring. In further upcoming sessions we will be discussing about central venous pressure waveforms normal and abnormal. If you find this video useful please like it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.